Hi, this is Mrs. Kidman, and in this video, we are going to be talking about the properties of trapezoids and kites. So, just like some of our previous videos on polygons, we are going to address some of the most important properties of trapezoids and kites. Now, these properties do not involve things like their area or their perimeter or things like that, but we're talking about what do we know about these shapes themselves. So, let's go ahead and take a look at trapezoids. So, what are trapezoids? Well, trapezoids are quadrilaterals. We always seem to forget that part. They are quadrilaterals where they have exactly one pair of parallel lines. So that means that these two are always going to be parallel. And then they also have a mid segment that is half the sum of the bases. So in a trapezoid, this is called a base and so is this. And the way that we find this mid segment, again, a mid segment, remember, it's equidistant from the top and bottom. The way that we figure out what this distance is here is we're going to take base A plus base B and then divide it by 2. So A plus B times 1 half or divided by 2. That's how we are going to get the distance of our mid segment here. And that applies to both isosceles trapezoids and regular trapezoids. So it doesn't matter which kind. So trapezoids, again, are quadrilaterals with exactly one pair of parallel lines. If they have two sets of parallel lines, then they are a parallelogram, not a trapezoid, which kind of separates them into their different categories there. Okay, so next we're going to talk about isosceles trapezoids. So isosceles trapezoids are where each pair of base angles are congruent. That's kind of how they're defined. Now when we think about an isosceles trapezoid, really what makes it an isosceles trapezoid is that these sides here are actually congruent to one another. So when those sides are congruent, then what that means is these are parallel and these base angles here, so either these ones or these ones are going to be congruent. Now notice how they're both called base angles, even though they're not both on the bottom. So those angles are congruent, but not all adjacent angles. So this angle and this angle are not congruent, but this one and this one are. Their diagonals are also congruent here. So this diagonal is the same as this diagonal, and the mid-segment is still half the sum of the bases. So that's pretty cool. So keeping these in mind, let's go ahead and apply that mid-segment theorem for trapezoids to find different parts here. So first we want to find MN. So that's the mid segment of this trapezoid. So what we're going to do, remember to find that mid segment, we're going to do one half the sum of our two bases. So we want to do half of one base, which is 18, plus the other one, which is 10, and half of 28 is going to be 14. So that means MN equals 14. Fantastic. Okay, let's take a look at segment AB here. So this one is different. We actually want to find a base here. So let's use that original equation. The mid segment equals one half A plus B, right? Where these are our two bases. So that means that our mid segment actually equals one half A plus half of B, right? We can use that distributive property there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to plug these in. This is one of our bases and this is our mid segment, to then figure out what that other base is, or B. So I'm going to plug in 11.5 for A and 18.7 for B, 1 half 11.5, and that will be 1 half of B. So let's go ahead and figure out what that will be. Well, 1 half of 11.5 is going to be 5.75, so we've got 18.7 equals 5.75, plus one half of B. I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So 18.7 minus 5.75 is going to be 12.95 equals one half of B. And undo a one half, what I'm going to do is multiply everything by two. So this distance of B is going to be 12.95 times two, or B equals 25.9, meaning that that segment AB is 25.9. Cool, right? Okay, so the last type of a quadrilateral we're going to talk about here is a kite. So what is a kite? Well, a kite is two pairs of consecutive sides that are congruent in a quadrilateral. So here's a kite. These sides are congruent and these sides are congruent. So we have two sets of consecutive sides. Now the cool things about these kites is that their diagonals are actually perpendicular and exactly one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So these angles here are congruent. Now this also lends to some other cool properties like this piece is bisected here, but the other part of the diagonal is not. So only one of our diagonals here is actually bisected. 
which is also pretty awesome. And only these two angles are the same, so these ones are not. But remember, they still add to 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples relating to kites. So what we want to do in both of these cases is find that angle G. Now remember when we're talking about angle G, we want to make sure that we keep in mind those properties of the angles. So these angles right here, the ones between our pairs, so we've got a pair here and a pair here, these two angles between we know are actually congruent. So if the whole sum of a kite adds up to 360, if we subtract these two angles, so subtract 100, subtract 40, that will give us the sum of these two. So 360 minus 100 is 260, minus 40 is 220, and then if we divide that by two, because these two angles are congruent, we get 110 degrees. So G is 110 degrees, and so is angle E. Awesome. Okay, now let's use that same property here. We want to find angle G. Well, if angle H is 110, I know that angle F is also going to be 110 degrees. So we have 360 equals 110 plus 110 plus 60 plus the measure of angle G. And we can solve for that measure of angle G by combining those other ones together. So as we add up 110 plus 110 plus 60, we end up getting 280. So 360 equals 280 plus the measure of angle G. And then we can subtract out that 280 from 360. And we end up getting that the measure of angle G here equals 80 degrees. So that's kind of how we can apply those properties of trapezoids and kites. So trapezoids and kites are also very interesting and very cool quadrilaterals that we can talk about. Now trapezoids and kites are special because they are not parallelograms, but they are a type of quadrilateral. So just as like a breakdown, when we talk about things, we have quadrilaterals. And quadrilaterals break down into two categories. We are a couple categories, but in the categories of quadrilaterals, we have things that are parallelograms. And within those parallelograms, we actually have a couple of things that we've talked about recently. So you have parallelograms themselves, but within parallelograms, you also have a couple types of special parallelograms. So that's where we have those rectangles and we have the rhombuses. But then we also have that joint part where those two are combined. And that part where those two combine actually become a square, right? So we have an overlap there with squares. Then under quadrilaterals, we have our other categories here. We also have a type of quadrilateral called a trapezoid. And this is a special type of quadrilateral. And trapezoids within those, we also have those isosceles. So Sorry, that one's a hard word to spell. Isosceles trapezoids, which we've discussed, and we have kites. So notice how kites, trapezoids, and parallelograms are all three different types of quadrilaterals. Within parallelograms, we have a couple of subtypes, rhombuses and rectangles, and those subtypes combine to get us a square. Underneath trapezoids, we have isosceles trapezoids, which are really cool as well. But that's kind of how those quadrilaterals break down in that special piece. And so we want to be sure that we can identify what type of quadrilateral we have, whether it's a parallelogram, a trapezoid, or a kite. And in previous videos, we've talked about how to decide if something's a parallelogram. Remember, if it's a trapezoid, it only has one set of parallel lines. And if it's a kite, then the adjacent sides are going to be congruent. But you're going to have two pairs of those adjacent sides that are congruent, right? Not just one. So they're not all going to be congruent. It's going to be two and two. And that is kind of the breakdown of quadrilaterals. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. But that is properties of trapezoids and kites.